Aquarius placements, this is a message for you. This could be your energy. This could be the energy of someone you're connected to or the circumstance. This reading may play out from the perspective of the cross watcher. This is a timeless reading. It's also very general. So take what resonates only and let the rest go. Sagittarius placements, who are you? Okay, this is a message from your higher self, from your spirit team, from higher consciousnesses, from your galactic team, from your ancestors. This is a message from the source. Who are you? Okay, let's get into your message. We're going to call in some help. All-knowing all source, divine spirit, archangels, guides, ancestors, ascendant masters, five and above, my higher self, and my galactic team of the highest light and resonant star races, star family. Please show me clearly what I need to see for Sagittarius placements. Allow me to be the clear channel and show me clearly. As I was inspired to do this reading, okay, throughout your whole meditative session and your pre-shuffle, there was just a very powerful, intense energy, almost like Jubilee mixed with a stark seriousness about who you are, what your purpose is, coming into this energy, this knowing, and a very powerful universal higher love energy all right i'm also seeing like a huge like infinitely expansive table almost you know, in my mind, like a table that the Galactic uh, Federation of Light would sit at to discuss like the concerns of the universe. And for some reason, this discussion is all about you, okay? It's all about you. And it's just this massive divine feminine energy. I wanted to, you know, do a divine feminine energy reading I haven't done those in quite a while because I feel like most of us who are here, you know, you're embodying that divine feminine energy. So when I break down the signs or when I do readings based on the Sagittarius perspective or when I'm divinely guided to do other placements, you're going to find yourself in that, in that energy. You're going to find yourself in that energy. So, um, as I evolve in my journey, I realize I don't have to do specific divine feminine readings if I again guided to then I will um I don't spend my time like I used to you know breaking down like karmic energies they're going to come through they're part of our reality of this duality this polarity um and this uh this plane of existence that we are are um are are in at this time so you evolve okay through these things as you expand in your own consciousness and on your specific journey mission etc okay so divine feminine energy come through really strongly in your meditative session um this clear concise energy of like my yacht and justice and truth right just a lot of information and power okay um that is moving you through towards some type of recognition right whether it's by these higher forces um really that you are embodying here okay in this space never forget how applauded you are for being here for choosing to be here, okay, no matter how many times you forgot who you are, who you are, you are that. No matter how many times you forgot who you are before you got to this space, you are championed, you are loved, you are held sacredly, and there is plentiful, plentiful, a plentiful amount of grace that's bestowed upon you for your mission okay so all of this very 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 powerful energy um 
was just coming through um, for the reading. So, you know, there's something here about sovereignty as well. So we're going to just get into the, into the reading. Like I said, it's about you. Who are you? Okay. Um, I don't know how long this reading is going to go. Um, I had a whisper in my ear that it was going to be a very precise message but we all know how that can be. So let's just get into it, okay? Um, today we're starting off your message with the faded overall energy, okay? Faded overall energy for Sagittarius placements. Who are you, all right? What does the higher consciousnesses want you to understand about you? So interesting, they're laughing, okay? So what they want to understand, what you to understand about you is that you are a star. Everyone who frequents my readings understands that when I get the title card that comes out, it is a clear indication. This is knowing thyself, right? This is knowing thyself. Something here, especially with this deck, this title card, this is about the fates, right? Something is faded here, all right? who you are at the core, red, root, okay? Um, this is connected to past lives. This is connected to your oversoul. This is connected to the fact that you are a star, okay? And this is also, again, again, knowing thyself. That's what my title cards mean when they come out. They also represent something that indicates inheritance, divine inheritance, anything that is yours, that you own, that you would have a title to, okay? Um, so when you think about um, minute things like cars and homes and material um, assets, yes, those could be things that would be implicated with this energy. But with this reading, and I'm going to, you know, do the micro and the macro, but here we're talking about your divine inheritance, right? Your royal bloodline. We're talking about um, your abilities, all right? And what you're coming into and knowing of about who you truly are, all right? So this is the basic overall energy. It's, it's all about you, right? Who are you? What is your purpose? You know, we're not going to define this message. We're just going to let the card speak. And hopefully you will be able to connect, okay, with parts of yourself. Parts of the reading will resonate. And there will be confirmations, okay, resonance for you, all right? These readings are about you tapping into you and about you doing the work. You know, it's not about someone else's psychic abilities or what someone else can do or say or predict, you know, because all we have is now. Everything we think, all our thoughts, our imagination, all of that is in the fourth dimension. It's all there. You know, we talk about fate. We're talking about the fact that, again, there could be multiple timelines, parallel timelines, you know, which path do I choose, right or left? If I choose right, am I going going against my the, the divine plan? If I choose you know, right, am I, you know, is it my, is it my own will? What is it? You know, in all actuality, it's, what's faded is what's faded. The universe loves you so and supports your decision to be here so much that no matter what you choose, there is a timeline out there somewhere, okay, that is going to put you ultimately where you need to be. That is something that is monumental at this time that's about to really polarize where there is going to be kind of like a portal shut off, right? If it's not the frequency of love, then it's it's going to be in some other, some other timeline, okay? That's not going to be able to access a certain level. But no matter what you choose, it all goes back to source. However long around the bend or through the cycles that you have to go to get where you ultimately are meant to be, that is totally up to you. But like I said, 
here we are, okay? It all leads back to source. It all leads back to you, okay? Title card, faded overall energy, all right? Star, right? This is about healing. This is about some of you are healers, some of you are light workers, some of you are dark workers, right? Um, some of you transmute dark energies, some of you are um, empaths, some of you are mediums, peace bringers, givers, inspirers in your own right, whatever it is, this is about coming into a space of the knowing, right? Coming into the space of the knowing through the lessons. Because whenever you get star energy, yes, Uranus, but Uranus is uh, Aquarius' traditional ruler is Saturn. And no matter what, when it comes to Uranus, when it comes to Aquarius, there's always going to be a lesson. Even though with its more recent ruler of Uranus is that unexpected, is that individuality, is the revolution of the individual. It's always going to be the individual ideas, right, that come together in different groups to annihilate against something that's restrictive, right? Uranus is extreme intelligence or it's learning through some of the actions and choices that we tend to make in this reality that limit us, that creates fear, that can lend itself to foolishness, right? So here we are with the title card as a faded overall energy for your reading. And that's beautiful, okay? Um, on the bottom of the deck, we have the Hermit here, all right? We know that the Hermit is represented by Virgo energy. Um, who are you? Here we have this shrouded energy, okay? Here in the darkness, whenever you think of the Hermit, you think of a wise, old soul, right? A wise, old soul, despite that this is a Virgo energy, Major Arcana, it's attached to the number nine, okay? So nine is the house that Sagittarius rules. It's that house of higher consciousness. It's the house of expansion and growth through wisdom, right? So this is about moving through shadows And being here to understand yourself, to understand the depth, the darkness. Within that space, there is light. There is something to take out and to share with the world, to expand yourself and others around you, okay? This is also about ancient, ancient wisdom. A light bearer is who you are. Below that, the high priestess. Yeah, that's who you are, okay? So far in this message, we have the title card, which is one. We have the high priestess, which is two. And we have the hermit, which is nine. These could all be synchronicities to you. These numbers could be um, highly resonant to you, to your soul in some reason. But the high priestess, we all know, sits between the pillars of wisdom and knowledge. Okay, the epitome of feminine spirit. And this is Akasha. This is Akashic Records. This is Archangel Gabriel. This is moon energy, all right? So all of this 
it's connected to Isis, it's connected to Sirius, it's connected to, um, to light. The fourth dimension, imagination, the subconscious mind, occult knowledge, secrets. Again, some of you definitely are very, very intuitive, highly intuitive, the keeper of secrets, um, very wise, very mysterious, very fortunate. Some of you have experienced quite a bit of toil and turmoil in your experiences this lifetime and in many multiple lifetimes. So this lifetime, you're here to spread Spread the knowledge to have discernment with who you share and spread knowledge with. This is also speaking about you being in a position where you are being initiated. You are being initiated into higher consciousness, higher wisdom. There are certain celestial gatekeepers that have access to certain levels of the Akashic Records and I feel as though there is some type of initiation that's happening for you, okay? Because with this hermit and this nine energy, something is returning, something is cycling, right? Um, that's divine timing. That is divine justice. That is evolution. So something is like, when I think of nine, um, I also think of like, pure source energy. So there is something that is opening up for you. Okay. Um, because it's your birthright because it is time. It is clear. Okay. So that is very insightful energy. I feel as though we're going to go right on ahead and, um, leave these energies out. I feel like they're really important. Um, Who are you? What is the message for you, Sagittarius placement? We're going to pull an oracle, oracle guidance, okay, and continue moving forward into this message. What are the messages for Sagittarius placements? Going deeper into who you are, your purpose. Wow. Okay. So we have Sirius B. Sirius B. Okay. Sirius B. All right. So we have, um, Responsibilities, lessons, and growing up. Responsibilities, lessons, and growing up. So here, this is Syrian energy. We did mention Sirius um, in the beginning of your reading. Um, I feel like Sirius B is more connected to like the water realms and um, it's all water. But I feel like Sirius B is more connected to like, you see the mermaids um, jumping about there playfully, the dolphins, um, all of this beautiful water energy. 
the amethyst clouds it's just gorgeous right but with this energy some of you could be connected to this constellation um to this uh star energy um so i feel like series b is more connected to like the moon and the water okay 19 reduces to 10 so this is like also again completions learning lessons growing right so um some of you can be syrian star seeds some of you could be you know connected to arcturus or um the Boutes constellation um a lot of arcturian star seeds sometimes go to different you know other star systems because that's they that's their uh, um they believe in contributing in that way so if you are an Artur arcturian star seed then you could have a connection to sirius okay as a blu-ray or as some other type of um star seed energy all right so this is who you are okay um so we have sirius b Series B. We're going to pull two more cards, okay? And see what else Source has for you about who you are, about the knowing that you're stepping into. We have Series B. That's definitely this high priestess energy, right? Um, the moon, the water. We're going to read these energies, um, some information about these um, these uh, star systems, these constellations, so that you can really connect with these energies. Sagittarius placements. What else for Sagittarius placements? Please show me clearly. Please show me clearly what I need to see for Sagittarius placements. Who are you? Whew. Okay, so we have Andromedans. Okay, Andromedans number four, right? Fours are stability, security, clarity, protection, right? Um, with this energy of Andromedans, we have autonomy, right? Free will and manifestation, right? Free will and manifestation. So we have the, you know, all the different energies floating around, metatron's cube we have all of these different um yin and yang it's just a very beautiful um very powerful energy here some of you can be and um a dramadin star seed or from the um that constellation um this is about powerful manifestation abilities the Andromedans can be again willful there's almost a um, what's the word I'm looking for warrior aspect to this energy as well so syrian energies sirius b andromeda andromedans and let's get one more if 
you consider yourself a star seed and your constellation or um, your star heritage doesn't pop out, that doesn't mean that that's not um, that that's not something that is truthful for you or that resonates with you. You could just be a, uh, connected to some of the other qualities of some of the other star systems, okay? Um, or connected to different star systems because of different past life energies, different um, energies that have connected to you and your soul through many lifetimes, eons even, okay? So let's get one more. One more card for Sagittarius placements. Who are you? What is your higher self? Star families, galactic energies want you to know. We're coming to the knowing of about you and your path, purpose, mission. One more card, please. All right, so we have the golden ratio. The golden ratio, okay, number 31. This is about beauty, nature, and patterns, okay? This is, again, a four energy, all right? So some of you are extremely um, connected to numbers, Patterns, numerology, sacred geometry, but again, the four energy is someone who is, um, could be um, a star seed, um, but your mission here on earth is deeply connected to restoring beauty to Mother Gaia. This could also have a lot to do with transmutation of, of denser energies, matter. All right, so this is what we have. Let's get the messages in and then we're going to just do a spread. Um, on the bottom of the deck, we have um, the Lyrans, number 11. Number 11 can be someone's life path number. It could be somebody's... Um, birthday, um, some specific energy, okay? But this is what I'm getting with 11. I did get the energy of justice when we started the reading. Um, there is um, this energy of, again, like portal energy, right? Uh, the high priestess, this is also the number nine. This is the, the energy, right? Sagittarius energy is that bridge between... Um, between that collective consciousness and as below energy it's that perception okay the higher perception the higher perspective so um strength courage and bravery that is a warrior aspect okay so some of you could be connected to um the Lyrans also. So we're going to put this uh, golden ratio here and go ahead and place the Lyrans there. Okay. Beautiful. Who are you? So we're going to start with the Syrians. Sirius B. B. 
beings, these beings are from the Sirius binary, possible trinary star system. Sirius B is the white dwarf companion star that was once larger than Sirius A. where Syrian B beings reside. The shamanic Dogon tribe of West Africa revere their ancient teachings on their deity Nomo, who was a Syrian B star being that was said to arrive in a massive flying boat, then instructed them in complex astronomy and ancient history. Dogon artifacts dating back 400 years have accurate orbits of the star before astronomers had telescopes. Nomo informed the Dogon shamans that humanity's descent of consciousness was due to materialism and greed. Some suggest certain Renegade Syrian B ETs may have sold out and are responsible for providing advanced interdimensional technology to the clandestine government agencies for the Montauk and Philadelphia projects which inside sources say failed miserably with terrible consequences. Syrian B beings are bipedal with amphibian and aquatic features. They are superb in water and have advanced civilizations and technology to navigate cosmos. Syrian B beings visited and interacted with ancient Babylonian, Akkadian, and Sumerian civilizations. Okay, so with this energy, okay, we have sink or swim, we have having to face facts, growing up, adolescence, responsibilities, bisexual, preoccupied, integration, lessons, entertainment, training, apprentice. So, Many people that resonate with this energy could be entertainers, artists, um, but there's just a, a, an energy here of um, learning through growth, okay? Some of you who connect with the Sirius B energy could have had very tumultuous, um, emotionally um, challenging, Adolescent years. Okay. So again, series B, number 19, it reduces to 10. So this is about like completion and cycles, all right? Um, some of the shadow aspects of this energy could be self-loathing, regrets, right? Remorse. Some of those more like scarcity mindset energies, emotional, watery energies, okay? Having a chip on your shoulder, um, immaturity, self-sabotage, all right? So that's Sirius B. We're going to go to the Lyrans. Number 11. Lyrans, okay, 
number 11 here, strength, courage, and bravery. All right, so the fellow Lyrans are sometimes referred to as lion people or cat people. The Lyran civilizations um, originates from the North Lyra constellation, which also contains Vega. The Lyran's genotype was often the dominant original mother genotype used in ancient star seed projects of cosmos, as they are one of the oldest bloodlines in the Milky Way galaxy. Many ETs within the Milky Way galaxy are ancestrally related to the ancient Lyrans. They usually stand six to 10 feet tall and are solid to muscular in build. Their complexions may, may vary anywhere from light golden amber to darker chocolate brown. Hues. Some Lyrans have strawberry blonde or vibrant ginger hair. The darker Lyrans have dark to black hair. Lyrans flesh is covered in a light, soft type of fuzz or like well, not actually fur, just a fuzz kind of um, texture. They have feline type eyes and slightly pointed ears set highly on their heads. The Lyrans have battled many bloody cosmic wars in the past with the Orion, Alpha Draconian, and the Reptilian empires. Lyrans live a harmonious lifestyle and practice careful biodiversity of their ecosystem. Prior to the Egyptian pyramids ever being built, the ancient Egyptian Sphinx was built by the Lyrans and other visitors of the time. During the Leo 2000 year constellation time phase of the procession of the equinoxes, Lyrans do not suffer fools gladly and are an honest, open, bold, and proud race. They are known to be combative and fiery for matters that value that they value dearly while also being warm and affectionate. It is said that Lyrans have one of the most extensive collections of ancient cosmic history in our galaxy. Today they are mostly considered today they are mostly considered retired honorable race and hold great prestige in galactic councils. Okay, so this is strength, this is courage, bravery, defiance, respect, um, library, um, affectionate, honor, ancestors, okay? Um, there could be energies that connect with, you know, being cold or cruel or closed or weak, uh, maybe even cowardly, okay, um, when in a lower aspect. Okay, but this is the Lyran energy. And lastly, we're going to go deeper into uh, the Andromedans, number four. The Andromedans come from the Andromedan constellation, 2.5 light years away near the great square of Pegasus. Andromedans inhabit a massive area in space and are possibly the oldest race that visits our Milky Way galaxy. They are an abstract and dimensionally fluid species. Andromedans do not need or use spacecraft. They usually use the nearby galactic gateway Antares as a di dimensional travel portal through Andromedans. I mean, though Andromedans can holographically adopt any appearance, including elementals via shape shifting, they typically ap appear like humanoids with varying shades of blue skin. Other ETs revere Andromedans and say they are possibly the highest 
known ascendant masters of these regions in the universe. Andromedans methodologies are often perceived as obscure, yet brilliant. They are very elusive and selective about who they choose to communicate with. You can somehow, you know, correlate some of these um, qualities to your, your human experience in this reality if you do connect with this energy. Andromedans are extremely concerned with humanity's future and with the ecological, the ecological devastations happening on Earth. They would prefer all benevolence and malevolence ETs were absent for a while so humanity can master their own monumentous energetic shifts of ascension without persuasion or deception. They are 12th dimensional ascendant masters and have fully awakened the quantum capacities that far exceed humanity's still dormant inbuilt DNA codes of abilities. Andromedans understand the limited logic and awareness Earth humans are conditioned into. However, humanity must incorporate and develop left and right hemisphere awareness and open heart presence and observation if they deserve to evolve. For without this, the tiny bandwidth of human spatial and light awareness presently and the average human is just not enough for ascension. Andromedans have their own high council regarding intergalactic and interstellar governance of multitudes of star systems and galaxies. Again, Andromedans, um, self-agency, um, autonomy, right? We were talking about sovereignty, um, left logic, right? creative hemispheres, alignment of these two, ascendant consciousness, free will, untapped potential, right? Zero point energy, protection, um, paradox, perception, manifestation. This is go-getter energy. This is uniqueness, okay? Quirkiness, um, eccentric energies, individualistic, okay? Um, we do have a lot of Aries energy here that is sometimes associated with um, Andromedans, okay, that warrior energy almost. Um, we also have um, a lot of creativity, excitable energy, right? Telepathy. This is fast paced, quick, swift thinking energy, all right? So, who are you? Okay, hopefully, you're tapping into that with this energy. We're going to end with the golden ratio, all right? The golden ratio and what that represents for you, Sagittarius placements, as you you know, you're stepping into this knowing of who you are. This message from source, your higher self, the energies that you are moving into right now. The golden ratio, the golden ratio, okay. The Fibonacci sequence or the golden spiral is the self-stimulating fractal spiral sequence that is mathematically and geometrically found anywhere in nature. It is an irrational number and a represented that's represented as phi. Numerically, it is the sum of two numbers that precede it. So the sequence is 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, and 144, and so on and so on. It is known as nature's secret code or nature's universal rule as the divine connected proportions of the golden ratio includes the small is to the large as the large is to the whole. This is almost like universal energy, right? Universe. It's parts of the whole. So, the governing pattern of the golden ratio is found anywhere in nature, including harmonics, art, shells, flowers, leaves, architecture, weather patterns, trees, plants, animals, human biology, and spiral galaxies. The golden rule, I'm sorry, the golden ratio has also been discovered on a nano and subatomic scale 
in solid matter. It is said that some extraterrestrials use the golden ratio spiral sequence symbolically with higher consciousness for propulsion energy of their crafts and to navigate interdimensional time travel. So some of you are interdimensional time travelers, okay? Um, that's what the energy of the high priestess is all about. It's like transversing, transversing through portals, transversing through spaces transversing through density right so um beauty art music nature maths numbers patterns the weather right some of you are airbenders airbenders firebenders earthbenders waterbenders okay um going with the flow okay this is about design some of you could be architects um in this um lifetime um, this is life holding, life unfolding in a natural synchronistic way or pattern, um, not forcing anything. Um, this is like organic energy, um, being present in the here and now and blessings. All right. So some of you are here to bless the world. Some of you are earth angels. Some of you are here to be blessed this lifetime. Okay. Because of your past karma. Um, so very very beautiful energy very very powerful as well okay so we're going to um move forward and see if we can get a message in for you guys about who you are and what does the universe want you to know about you who are you how is that connected to your purpose, your past? Who are you? Who are Sagittarius placements? Show me clearly. Thank you so much. We have the star in reverse. Okay. Interesting. So the fate of the overall energy is the title card. And it's representative of the star. Um, knowing thyself, which is what the star energy is all about right the star is aquarius energy um it's this is what i'm getting here this is about moving through right this space it's funny how you have series b here but with this this uh star card energy i always get series a right because series b for me is more about um again the water the moon and series a is more about the stars okay and that type of light energy but who are you you're here to know yourself to understand that everything that you seek is within all the light that you seek is within to bring that inner peace that serenity to yourself and to others through growth through the lessons right Aquarius's traditional ruler is Saturn and I feel like in past experiences lifetimes even there was confusion there was something that you have come into the understanding this lifetime about the nature of negativity. And seeking some type of peace or clarity or wisdom outside of yourself. Again, the stars of light that you seek when you're entering a new phase of life. Reminding you that you are connected to the universe. You are that. And all the wisdom that you seek is available, right? Embracing growth, embracing ideas, 
moving through confusion, despair, and failing the tests over and over and over again, trying to remember who you are, moving through negativity. Who are you and why are you here? To transmute, okay, this energy within others and within yourself to bring hope to the world, right? Serenity, clarity, peace, and renewal to the planet. What else does Sagittarius play for? The chariot. Yep. To bring balance, right? Seven energy. Cancer energy. The star card, okay, is number 17, reduces to eight. And now we have the chariot number seven some of you could have jupiter in the eighth house jupiter in the seventh house right uranus in the seventh house or uranus in the eighth house but either way this is expansive energy this is dynamic change rebellion expansion of a knower a knowing an intern an inner knowing all right that transmutes right transverses moves through okay the negativity through the fears and into this clarity into this passion inner peace balance right the chariot is all about that ability to conquer any obstacle because of balance drive passion victory you are here to bring the balance you are here to Again, transmute to it's almost like with again the cancer energy here, the star energy here, Uranus energy is like binary. But the cancer energy is feminine, all right? So there's something here about Annihilating duality, okay, and moving, moving the energies, shifting consciousness or moving us into a space where there is this balance being restored to the universe in respect to cancer energy, right? In respect to the mother, in respect to mother universe, in respect to the polarities. That we spoke about before your purpose is movement control motivating awakening The chariot is determination, right? Fearless faith.
What else for Sagittarius placements? Who are you? Judgment. Judgment. Air, water, fire. Air, water, fire. With judgment, we have Scorpio, we have Pluto, we have a fucus energy. It's something about bringing everything back to the feminine energy, right? Because we end this with Cancer and Scorpio. Cancer and Scorpio. From the star energy in reverse. Air energy is masculine. Who are you? You're here to move through the lessons to wake up yourself and others to come into this knowing, this truth, to spark this revolution of the individual, to merge groups together, okay, for a mass awakening. Allowing yourself and others to answer the call on their spiritual path, divine purpose. This is moving through density, finding serenity, and only finding it within, taking lifetimes and many, many experiences and hard lessons in order to get to this space. All right, but here, there's something that's moving quickly, okay, passionately, um, assuredly, with victory in sight, balance, okay, and freedom. Judgment is freedom. Judgment is absolution of karma, of past life karma, of energies being transmuted, right? This chariot is like transverse, right? Transverse is like being able to um, move through something, um, finding a way through, right? Through a portal, through an obstacle, through the matrix, right? Through an illusion into this freedom. This is getting your just dessert. This is purification by fire. Judgment. My ears are, both my ears are ringing. Um, so this is like rebirth. Renewal. Moving through the blockages. This is who you are. Four of Wands. The Four of Wands is like a promise, right? Here to be free. You're here to bring something together. This is, you know, the, the judgment card is number 20, reducing to two, it's about gestation. 
bringing something together, creating a new experience, a new paradise, a paradigm shift. The Four of Wands is about your spiritual path. 1111, this is about becoming whole, right? Becoming whole. A promise being fulfilled through you, through your purpose, through your light, through your love. What else for Sagittarius placements? Who are you? So far we have Scorpio, Cancer, Aquarius. Fucus. Cancer, Virgo, we had a lot of different constellations come through, we had Sirius, Sirius in general, you know, Sirius B, Sirius A, Arcturians, Bootes constellation, Andromedas, Lyrians. Someone here could just be like your oversoul is like pure light, just dark matter or connected to numbers, right? Secret geometry. That's the like true God energy. So what else? What else is gonna come through? Who are you Sagittarius? Placements. King of Cups, right? Balanced, healer, psychic. Someone in control. Someone generous, someone fair, someone loving with a lot of love in their heart, someone balanced, right? And their masculine energy. Again, cancer. Cancer or water, masculine energy. What else for Sagittarius placements? We have the fool. Wow. <laughs> this is speaking to me about someone that is a child at heart, someone who is magical, right? The fool is the child. It's the magic. It's the magical child within. I bring this up a lot because it's something that is crucial. Crucial to ascension. Crucial to expansion. Crucial to manifestation. Right? Aries is the spark. The fool is Uranus energy. We just got done talking about that. Either the fool, Uranus energy is either extreme intellect or it can be extreme foolishness. But either way, you're going to learn, right? You're going to learn. You know, whenever I see the zero, I'm thinking, again, like zero point. That's a drama and energy. Zero point protection energy. But what they're saying about who you are is someone who is 
going back to source, someone who is extremely connected. Zero is about cycles. And this is about perpetual youth and travel, time traveler, right? A time traveler is what I'm getting here. We have the fool, we have the six of swords, which is a car to travel. And then we have the six of cups, which is past life energy. And we have water on the six of swords and we have this water energy with the six of cups. So this is like travel by water. This is again, Syrian energy, um, definitely serious B energy. And when we had the star card come out in the reverse as your first card out, this is what you're here for, right? To bring clarity, to understand yourself, to finally connect with who you are and help others do that same thing during this time of the Great Awakening. The truth you seek is within. And now is the time to harness your ideas, to come into this clarity and allow others to do that as well. So this is like It is in you, in your soul, to to go, to be intuitive, to take action, to take risks. That that is the energy of the fool. That is the energy of the child. A leap of faith into this. Space as a multidimensional being, choosing to find your space here in this realm again and 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 again to find your way back out, right? To move through the conflict five of swords you can't get to the six of swords without going through the five of swords right the betrayal and the pain and the entitlement and the relationships and the confusion and the negative energies and everything that you've had to move through and transmute just to become light again right not always making this trip repeating cycles but this lifetime this experience you're free you're free as free as a child going back to the beginning into the beginnings end again right light is the sun moving out into the seven right out into the unknown but there is a strategic as above energy that you are connected to it's your higher self right it's the sun within you the source that's within you the god that's within you that is moving you through right into this promise right of emotional fulfillment connecting back with yourself Connecting back with your oversoul, connecting back with your counterpart, right? To do great things for the universe. Because the Six of Cups could represent past life energies, ancestors, divine connections, soulmates energy, twin soul energy. So we have Uranus, we have Aquarius, we have Scorpio. This is all about depth, emotional depth, 
and intellectual depth in a spark in the cycles but this time it's going back to sell it's making the transition it's the rites of passage right that's connecting you back to love that's connecting you back to love promise fulfilled nostalgia joy bliss innocence reunion this is who you are this is who you are own it be it this is true freedom this is a promise fulfilled You're here to bring hope, peace, and clarity to this world, to this realm, okay? As we move towards the promised land, towards ascension. A promise to build a new world with us too, with you in the middle. It's all about you. Right? It's all about you. This is beautiful. This is about your rites of passage coming back to you the universe coming back for you to bring you back to you and it's beautiful yeah I think we're going to leave it there and hmm. so where's this understanding where's this understanding taking Sagittarius where's this understanding taking Sagittarius placements two of cups out of the confusion, right? Out of disconnection, out of situations and partnerships and anything that no longer serves your greatest and highest good. This knowing is purging that scarcity mindset, feelings of lack, unworthiness, struggle, right? Disconnection, which is where it has been difficult in many, many lifetimes to move through, right? The star card in reverse with the first card out. All of this powerful energy here, this rite of passage, is moving you through this. This is past. This is what you've evolved from. This is what you're ascending from. No more pain. No more drama in my life. No one is ever going to make me hurt again because I know thyself. Where I'm going, it's pure love. Pure love. Harmony. Peace. Love, there is no doubt that jealousy is always with you many places. But if it is little, it is good. Too much is bad. Yeah, this, this experience, this duality, 
all of this is too much and too much is bad and you have learned these lessons and you've earned this rites of passage. Who are you? You are ascending. You are made new and pure and whole and whole. Let's get one more. Where is this energy? This knowing of thyself. Taking Sagittarius placements. One card, please. On a slow and steady path. Into paradise. On a slow and steady path into paradise knight of pentacles right this is about diligence this is about patience this is about right the knight of pentacles is the heir of royalty there's no need to rush this is a methodical plan by the universe right this has been eons lifetimes started from the bottom and now we're here right divine inheritance connecting back to self to you was absolute you are that the Knight of Pentacles is a sure thing. The Knight of Pentacles is someone who's done the work. The Knight of Pentacles is steady and sure, and it's a message that's very secure, right? within yourself of who you are and where you're going. Hope brought Jason of unstrained soul and the Argonauts to the Golden Fleece through many adventures and a dangerous travel <laughs> and a dangerous travel through many adventures and a dangerous travel your soul is now free this is what is your birthright and this is what you are this is absolute this is guaranteed and this is who you are beautiful absolutely beautiful we're going to end with an oracle who are you Sagittarius you're connected to um, before we do the downright advice I'm just gonna pull another oracle here who are you who are Sagittarius placements any other messages any other synchronicities show me clearly who is Sagittarius we have Bina okay left eye knowledge okay again 
here to spread truth. This is like consciousness, right? Bina. important so I feel like someone is going to connect to this message all right um, this is who you are the third emanation a flow of light that pours into the world a candle whose flame may light another without diminishing its own that is who you are Bina seeks not only creation but purpose she's a flare of pure intent that blossoms from the heart of existence and out into the world her energy brings with it a desire for knowledge she is the force that churns all the potential from higher emanations into a form that can be received by our consciousness. The white orb illuminates the way forward. The Nye sits atop the pillar of severity, heading the feminine aspect of the diagram, creating perfect balance with Chakma at her side. Together, they represent a continuum of psychic understanding. Wapanai represents the power of knowing. Chakma reveals the power of not knowing. One acts as a vessel to the other, as the other fills that vessel, giving it purpose. You are purpose. You are here to fulfill purpose and to open up that vessel. Fill that vessel and the desire to explore purpose in others. This energy can be found in learning, shared experiences, and creation. Like I said, some of you are completely connected to creation, to light, to numbers, sacred geometry, right? Benai. And on the bottom of the deck, we have Radziel, okay? The Angel of Mysteries. We have the High Priestess here. Again, a lot of you are High Priestesses. You are light workers, dark workers, healers, um, connected to higher consciousness and the Akashic Records, okay? So, we have Benai and we have Ratzio. Who are you? The Mysteries. The Keeper, the Speaker of Truth. All knowledge is pressed within the bindings of his book. Ratziel stands at the foot of the tree of life and observes all of creation, ever the diligent witness, forever transcribing the whole of creation. The book is passed to Enoch through his journey into the tree of life. Enoch represents Keter and Metatron, okay? So this again, sacred geometry. Okay, some of you are that. <laughs> you are that. There are some things we simply cannot know. Such is the precious narrative of life. We can know the parts of the play, but not the stories and secrets and hidden endings keep the performance alight and dancing through the universe. 
Ratziel, wrapped on high, our ever-present observer, we dream and fill Ratzel's book of mysteries. Our breath turns its pages. Exhale. Signs. A book. A mask. And codes. Okay? You are here to crack the codes. You are here. You are the code. All right? You are the code. You are the numbers. Okay? This is who you are. The dark. The mystery. Dark. Light. Light. Transmuted from dark is the light. Light transmuted from dark is the light. Know thyself. Rites of passage. Okay. Let's get final messages to end the reading. For Sagittarius placements, who are you? Who are you? Final messages to end the reading for Sagittarius placements, please. Thank you so much. Who are you? Wow, I, I can't make this up, but this is really connecting with your Sagittarius reading about the royal magical portal that's protected as the universe comes to return for you. When it returns for you, it's going to reveal that you are you, that you are source, that you are the universe. Okay, so this is powerful. You're returning back to you, back to source, back to the beginning. You're coming home. You're remembering. Return of the codes of the memory. Final message to end the reading for Sagittarius placements. Divine advice. Who are you? You are not who they told you you are. You are a co-creator with the universe, a multi-dimensional multi being. You're not your past. You are now. You are light. Transmute it from dark. You are all that was and all that will be. You are consciousness. And this is what's being left behind, right? This is who you are and what you're here to transmute. All the negativity. All that was brought in to keep you in density, forgetting who you truly are, right? Who you truly are. And now you are moving swiftly through anything that was designed to conquer you. You're conquering it and you're helping others do the same thing with drive, with passion and to this deserved freedom, liberation. Blessings. Final card, who are you, Sagittarius placements? You are the muse. You are a creator. You are creation. You are magic. You are love. You are light. You are free. Okay? And you are complete. 
you are whole. And the cycle continues. The cycle continues. But there will not be any more cycling or reincarnation in this energy of the star card in reverse. No more grief, no more pain, right? Through the sunshine and the rain, you've earned your rites of passage and you're remembering who you are. Again, 